big red invite for next, e next week's international service. Yeah. And so it's going to be a great time. You know, all of us um, professional chefs, we're going to be cooking, you know, different international cuisines. We're all going to be dressing up. So it's going to be incredible. You know, we're going to have a powerful speech as well. I'm Filipino, but I'm going to wear a Chinese outfit. Oh! Exactly. So be here for Peace Square. Uh, but, you know, everybody has already talked about what is Easter. And, you know, Brandon and Keanu have talked about it. It's not about the Easter Bunny, nor is it about the chocolates. Okay, we get that. But what is it really about? One thing that takes me off though, throughout the whole year, the one event that everybody looks forward to, Christmas. Yeah. And I don't understand why. Without Easter, Christmas is worthless. Whoa. The Bible is worthless without Easter. If Jesus has not resurrected, this church wouldn't be here. You probably won't be here. Nations wouldn't be here. So it's all about Easter. And there's a lot of scriptures about Easter, a resurrection, all these things. But I me and my friends are going to be talking about one particular at the tail end of the gospel. If you guys go to Luke 23, verse 32 to 34. Luke 23, 32 to 34. Now I read, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. At this time, three men, two criminals and one beside, three different hearts, one outcome. All of them headed to the death. And it's the same scenario here. These three men, they're completely different hearts. The question I ask for you today, what heart do you have? The title of the sermon today is, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Which one are you? Point number one, the good. Jesus, as we know, he had a good heart. Because he had a heart that chose to love, when he had absolutely no reason to. But the thing is, us today, the world, we love with a price. How much is your love? Maybe, you know, give me enough chocolates and I'll love you. Corey. Many, many of us, we go, you know, I'll love you, I'll do you a favor, but what is it for me? You gotta do something for me before I do something. And I'm pretty sure this is a very common thing in Australia, in Hong Kong, there's not many of it. But there is these prevalence of carrots. If you work in retail, if you work in a customer service, there are these carrots. They walk in and they go, I'm the boss here. I expect a refund. Give me this, give me this, give me this. They walk into a store and they go, it's all about me. And let's be honest, that's how all of us think. You go to a you know, in every relationship, we think, okay, what can I get? If you're not useful, forget about it. And sometimes when we don't get what we want, guess what? We're angry. How dare you not do this? That's just who we are. But Jesus flips this around. When you ask Jesus, hey, what is it, what's in it for me? Jesus goes, absolutely nothing. You don't get anything. You sacrifice more. Jesus loved and drew others out and did not demand from them. Love shown that suffering shows sincerity. And there are a lot of examples. Even I look at, I look at my conversion. So I, I, I became a disciple five years ago. And you know, in a small church, barely two rows like this. Um, I was in the front and my friend Chi was preaching. I was at the front, I got the song sheets and I tore them to make origami in front of the sermon. I was this typical guy who just, after the sermon, went straight to the back where the flags are, ate the food, and just chilled by myself. That's who I was. And for eight months, that's who I was. They studied the Bible me continuously, again and again, and I was the same cold person. And there came a point where my friend challenged me, like, 
Why are you coming to church? You're not changing. I was like, hang okay. You gotta get this seriously. He challenged me to fast. So for fasting, you don't eat or drink for for me for two days. And I did it for two days and my heart changed. But the one thing that helped me change was seeing all of the, the same friends fast with me. All of them working professionals, laborious jobs. Some of them had to go to the airport, carry bags, and they did not eat that day. For me. For someone that didn't want, want to talk to For someone that just abused their life. And that pushed me. You have to understand that this is the only kind of love that should motivate people. When you go, I love you, therefore you should, that's not love. Behind every single person, behind all of you today, is someone that has not slept enough. Is someone that hasn't eaten enough. Is someone that haven't, hasn't lived a proper life just to give you something. And today, that still motivates you to study, to work, and to live life. I think of Emma. I really want to lift her up. Um, uh, uh, so there was one time we had these mentors, and she was being mentored by our dear friend, Effie. Um, and at that time, they were married. And so um, in this church, you know, we're striving to raise up a bunch of money so we can go and send out different mission teams. And she was also wanting to help. And um, Joe, our friend, was like, hey, here's a suggestion. Why don't you get everybody's unused clothes and go sell it? And she was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. 20 garbage bags full of clothes. Okay, all the way up there. She's a uni student, so it couldn't fit in her dorms. So Effie was like, hey, you can put it in our house, and uh, maybe we can sell it together. Great idea. One month came, nothing. A couple more, couple more time came, nothing happened. And then Emma came back to um, Effie's you know, room. She was married, so it's a double bed. And half of that room is all clothes. Uh, Manny, is what, uh, her, her wife, basically slept in a weird position for months because that bag, those bags of clothes were there. And Emma came and she saw half of them already ironed out, cleaned, and ready to sell. Despite Emma not wanting to change. And Effie looked at her and said, I'm doing this for you because I know you will do that for your disciples, for other people. And that has changed her ever since. <laughs> and so, for you, how much love has changed you? And I want to end with an apology. Uh, an apology. Not an apology. Uh, as much as I am the preacher, I don't need an apology at all. Um, but just imagine this little cucumber. You don't. You can't see it right now. It's really soft. It's really, It's gone really bad. Um, but imagine going to a grocery store and this cucumber is there. It's at the top peak quality. Five dollars, okay, really expensive for a cucumber. You walk in and go, nobody's buying this cucumber. So the manager goes, hey, discount, half off, 2.5. Nobody buys it. A couple customers drop it, ship it, destroy it, all these different things. And it's barely, barely edible. And the customer goes in, looks at this ugly little cucumber, and goes, what? I'm gonna, not only going to pay full price, but I'm going to empty out my wallet for this worthless cucumber. All of you. Oh. In <laughs> Every single day, you put a price tag on yourself. How much do you cost? Okay, maybe you had a bad day, cheapen it. I had a horrible night, I have a horrible relationship with parents. Half off, half off, half off. And yet, Jesus is this perfectly juicy, nice green apple. In comparison, this looks disgusting. But Jesus goes, you know what? I don't want to reduce your God. I want to see you as much greater than me. And I want to love you for that. And with that, what kind of heart do you have? Do you have Jesus' good heart? And to God's glory, amen. <laughs>
who hand their hand to insult at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Here we can see this criminal have a really radical heart. That's a bad heart. He did not want to repent, even though Jesus asked God to forgive him. And uh, we should not feel shame to repent. I think that guy doesn't feel shame. If he is secure to repent. But when we see our own sin, the only one reaction we should have is just repent it. That's why in Luke chapter 5, 31 to 32, it read, Jesus answered them, It's not the healthy who need the doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinner to repentance. So sometimes, you know, we know we are wrong, but we don't want to admit it. And before I have a relationship with my actual friend, we have a lot of arguments. But I don't want to admit that. Actually, it's, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, one day we cook Chinese food, you know, we eat uh, the potato. <laughs> I always give the potato to the government. Because I think it's convenient. But that company is pretty small. And uh, that government comes give me advice. They say, you should appeal between the sink and you can clean easily. I know it's a good idea, but I just don't want to admit it. <laughs>
of just relying upon the strength that he gives us. So maybe that's where you're at today. But there is hope for you. Or do you have a bruised heart? You know, what has bruised your heart? Do you feel like you're walking around just hurt? And we can see it all. We can't avoid it. Everyone can see that this apple is bruised. There's no avoiding that. You can't really hide it internally. <laughs> that, that you feel like people kind of avoid you. Like you would. If you saw this at the shops, you're not buying that one. You're putting it back. You want that good apple that, that uh, Choco had. No, I don't want to buy this. You feel like that's how people are treating you. They're like, oh. they look at me and they just, oh, I don't want to talk to that brother. He, you know, he looks a bit funky today. A bit off. <laughs> or, or just, you know, in daily life, that even if they do pick you, that they, they're willing to, you know, interact with you, that you're willing to bite into this apple, but you're not eating that part. So they avoid certain conversations, avoid certain topics, they walk on eggshells because they're like, ah, oh, I don't think I can really get in there, get in the depths of where this person's at. Is that where you're at today? Do you feel like you keep getting bruised? Keep getting hurt? Keep uh, just feeling so, yeah, angry at everyone else who's like, why do they treat me like this? Why, why, why is life so hard? Why, why do I keep just getting bruised and beaten up? Well, it, it might be because you're not protecting yourself with the Word of God. Are you relying on the strength that God gives you to really go out and face the world and be like, no, it doesn't matter if I get beaten up, I'm still going to keep going. See, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you may take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. And it, and it goes on there. But you have to ask yourself, if I just keep getting hurt, why am I always hurt by people? Well, that's life. That's going to happen. That's a guarantee. We're good at hurting each other. We're good at being selfish. We've nailed these things. But what God comes and does, He's like, I'm here to protect you. I've got the whole armor of the Bible to really just protect you, surround you, so that, yeah, when you get hurt, it, it deflects. It bounces off because you're relying upon my strength and not your own. And so maybe that's where you're at today. Or maybe you're like me and you have a hairy heart. You know, things that that grow, you've started to allow things to grow and you haven't really dealt with them. You haven't uh, taken them off just yet. That they, it now feels a part of you. You can look at this and be like, well, maybe this is how this is meant to be. Maybe this is how you could buy it from the shop. But if you've ever been to a, a store to buy a sweet potato, they don't look like this. <laughs> this comes from months of sitting in the dark closet to behind you know, your pans and it starts to get a bit moldy. This is what happens when, when you don't deal with your heart, I mean, when you want to bring it to the light. And so, does your heart start to look like this potato? That, you know, uh, and maybe it's, it can be many different things. Maybe it's money just creeps up. You know, I used to give generously to God, but, you know, then more expenses came up, different things, I needed a little bit of a nicer car, I needed one more extra holiday this year, and we seem just reluctant in giving. Or even God blesses us with a great new job, but just give the same amount as before. Why, why do I need to be as generous? God sees that I give to him, and it creeps up that way. Or a career. You know, we're, we're given uh, opportunities to further out our progress in life. But, you know, maybe they call us to work on time. Maybe they call us to work on Sundays. We don't go to church as much as we used to. We don't spend time with other Christians as much as we used to. I'm like, I used to be, you know, committed. I used to be, oh, I used to be just a sweet potato. <coughs> a sweet potato with extra bits. <laughs> And, and whatever it is, maybe you've got to ask yourself, when's the last time you just got into the Bible? When's the last time you just sat down and studied the Bible? And it just got in and was like, what is it trying, what's God trying to teach me today? That, that I don't actually know what He's teaching me because I haven't read it. You know, before I became a Christian, I very much thought I was one. I was like, well, I believe in God, so we're tight. You know, we're Gucci, God, you and me. I know I'm out there partying and drinking and doing all these things, but I believe in you, God, so. Don't worry. And it wasn't until I sat down and studied the Bible, I was like, oh, you actually have to like read it. You actually have to follow it. And I, I, have, I picked up my Bible one time my entire teenage years, and I felt justified. And I was like, oh, yeah, I've read my Bible once. I'm good. Is that where you're at today? You're like, I can't remember the last time I read my Bible. How much dust does your Bible have on your, shel uh, on your shelf over this Easter period? Maybe it's time to get into the Bible. You know, there's just many different things. 
where they will let life kind of grow and be a part of us. Whether it is, you know, our family, our uni, our hobbies, our video games, whatever it is, you start to just like creep up, creep up, and grow more and more. That, you know, you're not really a sweet potato anymore. You're more of a yam. And you say to yourself, I am who I am. And I'm okay with that. Absolutely, yeah, that's. I thought it was funny in my head. <laughs> but if your heart's at where it's at today, you might have to think to yourself, I have an ugly heart. I don't like looking at this, it's really making my head itch. But that, that's what God is seeing when he looks at your heart. And he gives us a little solution for it. You know, in Hebrews 12, 1 to 3 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race that marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So yeah, you can have bits grown on you, but Jesus helps us break them off. Get rid of that. Focus on the real. You know, stop playing video games so much. Read your Bible. Whatever it is, you can rip these off and just start to be a sweet-hearted potato again. So, a hairy heart, maybe that's where you're at today. I don't even like this, that sound. A hairy heart, it sounds gross. But maybe that's, sometimes we need a reality check of just, oh, yeah, there's things I've been allowed to grow up on my heart. But the good thing about ugly fruits, yeah, there's a pretty gnarly looking, I don't really like looking at these, they can still be used depending on who chooses to use them. Someone can look at that fruit and be like, uh, I know something, I can do something with that. I can blend it, make it smoothie. Yeah, I can't just eat it raw, but I'll cook it, I'll put it in a cake, whatever it is. The fruit can still be used if it's used correctly by the user. And so Jesus here, he looks at this robber and he sees his heart, his ugly heart. He sees the poor decisions he's made, how he's hurt people, how he's run away, how he's been held accountable for all of the you know, crimes that he's committed. And he's hanging there on the cross, struggling, just as Jesus is, barely hanging on for life, and with his last few words, manages to stand up for the one guy that deserved to be defended. You see, throughout Jesus' final days, his final last hours on this earth, this is the only man that stood up for him. Not his friends who said, I'll die with you, Jesus. Wasn't the Pharisees, the most spiritual people of the time, the leaders of the his synagogues, his churches. Wasn't the, the pilot, the ruler, who could have been a just judge, who could have stopped all of this. And not even the guards who were there to serve, to protect, but a beaten, bleeding, and bruised burglar was being held accountable for his poor decisions in life. So if, if you want to know anyone who understands the cross, it's this guy. This guy understands what it's like to go through and experience what Jesus did and have a heart change. It doesn't matter what you've done previously. It doesn't matter how your first few months of this year, how your past life, even yesterday. It doesn't matter. Because Jesus looks at the ugly heart and welcomes him into paradise. Luke 23, 42 and 43 says, Then Jesus said, Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So, we've looked at the different characteristics of, you know, the cross. The different characters that were there at Easter. The good-hearted Jesus who was willing to die for us. We're, we're here today because of the bad-hearted burglar who just didn't want to humble out. And some of us get like that. We've all been like that at one point. And then the ugly-hearted yeah, it's not pretty to look at. It's not pretty to, to really look at his life. He's not someone I would want to follow. But his heart, I can imitate. So, you may have an ugly heart like me today. You've allowed things to grow up. Things that you're like, I need to just cut that off. You may have uh, bruised bits. Everyone can see, and they're, they're avoiding you. You're like, why, why are people weird? Why do people treat me weird? Why do I treat them weird? I just need to you know, go and rely on, on Jesus and stop being so insecure. Or maybe you have the soft bits. But whatever it is, there is someone who has already picked you. Has looked around and saw the other one. That heart. That's the one I want. And he is the one that died for you and that we're celebrating today. 
So if you're here today, you've already been gifted. So now it's time to let you, let him use you in the way that he wants to. And whether that's a smoothie, whether that's put in a cookie, whatever it is, he wants to use your heart in such an incredible way. And there's a reason why you're here today. So I want to thank you all for coming. I want to wish you a merry and happy Easter. And to study the Bible and see, yeah, okay, maybe my heart's ugly, maybe my heart's even bad. But what can Jesus do to really move it and put it in the right place with him? So I, I wish you all a happy Easter and we'll have the song completed to come up for one more song. To God be all the glory.